Now, there are fears Kurdish fighters who helped defeat Islamic State in northern Syria will be themselves slaughtered by Turkish forces who are now poised to invade the region. US troops who've been allied with the Kurds are now starting to withdraw from the area. For more, Middle East politics expert Dr Dara Conduit from Deakin University joins us in the studio. Good morning. Good Welcome morning. to morning. breakfast. Thank what was you. your first uh, assessment or thought when you heard of this move overnight from the president? Well, my first assessment wasn't shock. I mean, he late last year, Donald Trump said that the US would be withdrawing from Syria. So it doesn't come as a huge shock. Um, but it does come with sadness to think of the humanitarian crisis that this is going to cause. It's it's not, a, you know, it's consistent with the Trump administration's policy, but it's not a good choice. Lots of, uh, even some of President Trump's strongest allies saying uh, he's betrayed the Kurds, they'll, they'll be slaughtered. How, how uh, dicey could it become for them once the Turks go in? I think it's going to be a really um, difficult time for everyone in, in the northeastern part of Syria. Um, there are large, it's not just Kurds in that area, there are large IDP camps um, from pe of people that have spread, uh, that have moved from other parts of Syria. So I think the risk of humanitarian crisis is very real. The humanitarian crisis <laughs> um, is of course a concern. The immediate impact though in the region, what is going to be the, the first sort of challenge? I mean, they not, may not be able to keep ISIS fighters locked up. Mm. Could we see ISIS regrouping? So, um, I think probably the immediate challenge will be the humanitarian crisis, but over time I think this is going to be, you know, ISIS fighters last night are going to have thought, you know, yesterday was a pretty good day. Um, you know, the, the seeds that led to ISIS in the first place, the, you know, economic problems, the um, frustration with the international community, um, the political corruption, all that kind of thing is only going to be exacerbated. None of that has been fixed. And now that the US has supported this fighting force for years and is now just out of nowhere, pulled out is only going to exacerbate those tensions. And of course, we know that there are ISIS fighters under, in Kurdish custody in northern Syria. Um, and the question of what's going to happen to those, I think, is a really real concern. I think you know, Donald Trump has suggested they be uh, taken over by the Turks. But I, I think the Turks are pushing back uh, against that as well. So as Lisa said, there's a very real prospect of these people being free. Yeah. I, I don't know that they will be free, but certainly that seems to have um, been Erdogan's... Uh, he, he, it seems to have come to a shock, as a shock to him. Yeah. Um, Islamic State of Iraq, the group that preceded uh, the Islamic State group, as we know it, uh, was able to gain, uh, to regroup in the late 2000s on the back of a campaign on poorly guarded prisons in Iraq. So, you know, this has always been a risk. This is a risk. I've been saying this on television for some time. This is a risk. And now today it's, it's coming to fruition. Senior Republican Mitch McConnell said that really it's going to be Iran and Russia and Syria that benefit from this decision. Is that how you see it? Uh, look, the, uh, the, those that control northern Syria have always been really aware of the risk of Turkey and, you know, Turkey invasion is pretty much the worst possible thing to happen. So you can assume that the Kurds right now are talking to everyone and Assad uh, and his allies, Iran and Russia, are going to be the, you know, the main people that could benefit. And the, there is an Australian angle here. We're talking about the Australian IS fighters and relatives of IS fighters in the Al Hall refugee camp. Uh, some uncertainty about their situation now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think this is going to be a situation when we look back that we'll say that Australia and, and, and there are up to 50 countries that have um, nationals in those camps. We're really short sighted in their their approach. What is going to happen to these people? We don't know. Um, there are a lot of people, there are about 70,000 people in the Al Hol camp. A lot of them are actually people that have are IDPs who have fled ISIS. They're not all ISIS supporters. People often say these are all ISIS supporters. They're not. But there's about 10,000 foreign um, nationals that are ISIS supporters in some way or another. Um, and <clears throat> the question of what's going to happen to them is, is a real concern. Dara Conduit, thank you so much for thank coming Thank you for in. having me. Thank you.